m'a fait pour ça me capable pour le peuple d'Haïti toujours été un grand peuple pour lui toujours mettre la caille So for the first time, you know, the, the Haitians now have a democratic government uh, that will be able to manage the country's affairs. On the downside, um, the public treasury is empty. So we have uh, a lot of high expectations out there among Haitians who want to see improvement in their life, and quite rightly so. This is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, as everybody knows and everybody repeats. What really needs to happen now is massive support by the international community for the administration of Mr. Préval as president, so that he can actually start to spend money and begin to make that difference. Le courant d'un dossier qui fait mention de 30 millions de dollars qui était bail en novembre 2005 puis ont été mettre des structures pour ça qui passe en 2004 sous Jeanne par au fait journal Rodia. Ça m'a pris mon problème me dit que ça t'est passé déjà. Qui j'en fait gouvernement ou bien l'état pas près des mesures pour mettre des infrastructures sous pied pour ça pas au fait encore. La question est posée. Mais si quelqu'un monde qui a fait circuler des informations à savoir tu gon corps qui t'est bail et je mentionne 30 millions de dollars qui est supposé bail à des firmes étrangères. Est-ce qu'au courant de ça est-ce que le dossier ça passé devant qui j'en cas éclair si nous pour nous même comme média nous allons répondre à la question. Ça. Et. Moi, je ne sais pas comment ça. Et. C'est pour les yeux à venir dans l'oreille. Moi, je lis sur Internet que certains commentaires ont demandé l'État un terrain pour y faire un abri. Mais. I want people who contributed to funds that were raising money to help the people of Haiti, I want them to know that those funds didn't come into the coffers of the state of Haiti. Uh, we don't have those funds in our hands. However, with our own means, we're going to do what's in our uh, capability to launch the reconstruction phase. For example, we have received a donor for example, we have received $35 million in donation. People who gave 43 cents a dollar, $2, $10, $1,000, and countries that gave a million dollars, and it totaled $35 million. We have 20 million cubic meters of rubbers in Port-au-Prince, and removing them will cost $1.5 billion. In the first phase, we have, uh, uh, we estimate to remove, we'll be removing 2 million cubic meters, and it will cost $120 million. You can see that the $35 million that, I have, that we have received cannot perform a, a job that will cost $120 million. And when the cleanup phase will, will be over, then we'll have to start uh, building, rebuilding the roads. Uh, we'll have some engineering work to do, and we'll have to build tea shelters. And this is going to cost a lot of money. However, we did launch the operation, and we hope that the interim commission will take over as soon as possible. Mr. President, you make the point that the government of Haiti did not receive the money from individual donors around the world. But that money did go to organizations that are interested in helping here. Will they be paying part of the costs of clearing your streets, of resettling people from the camps? Can you access that money for the purposes that you feel need to go ahead with the reconstruction? The government received $35 million. Now, the NGOs and the United Nations system receive much more money than the government of Haiti. But I don't know how much they receive.
mademoiselle and ça se deuxième chanel ouais and yes i've been gone the ponty pose or whatever because i was tired and i was enjoying my birthday month january 5th was my birthday if you missed it it's because you don't follow me on instagram so i'll follow me to instagram punia because if you're subscribed to me and you're not following me on instagram what is you doing why are you here so let me just say this right now i'm actually upset because i filmed this video already and it was out of focus and um we have to do it again so jodia nous allons parler de président rené Creval. now this is the president that served as president during iris Stude's first coup as well as after his second presidency now rene Preval is a very interesting president but before we get into that i have to let you guys know a lot of this information comes from information that i learned during my caribbean as well as haitian studies type of classes i took in college as well as personal research and personal references that i had to reach out to feel free to kindly and respectfully comment any information or opinions you may have about Preval or any other president that i do a video on down below also keep in mind since i kind of started with divalier i'm going to be going down the line from there and then circling right back from the first president king emperor dictator whatever of haiti and going right back down so trust me you're going to get to everyone because haiti politics should be a netflix show like i'm telling you right now it's a lot it's a lot going on now if you guys are new here you would know that i'm very very like unbiased i give both spectrums. I talk about the supporters versus the anti-supporters. I am very, very in about this president. He didn't really do a lot of the classic things that we saw a lot of the past presidents do that was horrible. It was very hard to dig up dirt on Prival. Very, very hard. Because it seemed like anyone that didn't like Prival just had a lot of personal opinions. It didn't seem like he did a lot of regular embezzling and fear mongering and craziness that most of the other presidents did. I had to actually dig deep ask people and look at comments on videos to figure out what was going on because it's like the videos were pretty much regular meanwhile the comments were like and i'm like oh child like why y'all coming at his neck like that so you know i did some digging and here is what i found so Lene Quival was born january 17 1943 shout outs to the january babies okay comment down below if you were born in january or if you love someone who was born in January because we the best. And he had an agricultural background. His father's name was Claude Preval and he also had an agricultural background. Now agriculture of course relates to farming and you know he was very passionate about farming and he followed in his father's footsteps and ended up going to college for it as well. He graduated from Gem or Gemblo University with an agricultural degree and then continued his studies in geothermal sciences at the University of Pisa. Now, what's very interesting is after this, he ended up going to New York, I believe Brooklyn, where he worked as a waiter and a messenger. Now, what I found interesting about this was he was actually part of the bourgeoisie type of uh, clan of people that were responsible for pushing Duvalier out of office. Um, well, I guess, you know, the whole Duvalier regime. Now, this is important to keep in mind because this is part of the reason a lot of people have a problem with him. Now, Quival was a very quiet, small, subdued guy. He was very, very low key. He was out of the way and his personality was very like just calm. He was chill and he was the people's people, which earned him the nickname of T. Preval, also the champion of the poor. He is most notably known for being the first president to carry two full democratic terms without being rid out from a coup, a murder, an exile, or anything crazy like that. We all know Haiti love a coup. Okay, Haiti love the revolt. Haiti love the protest. However, he didn't 
really suffer from any of that. So before you watch this video, you kind of have to watch my Aristide video or have a very deep perception and understanding on who Aristide was as a president because it's very, very important for this one. He was very, very close with the poor. As you know, Aristide was the same, except he came from more of a religious background. He was a priest and he worked closely with the poor. In 1970, he moved to New York. However, he missed Haiti and he genuinely wanted to make a difference, especially with the education and the experience he had now garnered. And in about 1975, he returned to Haiti and picked up a position in the Natural Institute for Mineral Resources. In 1988, he opened up his own bakery in Port-au-Prince, aka the capital of Haiti, where oftentimes he was seen feeding bread to a lot of the poor children. And he often went back to the outskirts of Haiti, as well as just all around, you know, giving food, talking to them, creating relationships, seeing what it is, you know, that they were going through relating to them and such. So of course, through all this philanthropy type of work, he ended up meeting Aristide and him and Aristide actually became really good friends. So much so that he actually served as prime minister of his administration. Of course, definitely keep that in mind as well because it's going to come up later. They became really great friends. They were really, really cool. And he also exiled with him, I believe, the first, the second... Whichever time, honestly, Aristide had so many coops and so many problems and so many issues that I can't even keep up. But he ended up being exiled with him. But of course, as we know, like I said, one of his terms was in between one of his coups. And that was between 1995 and 2001. Now, woo, motherfucking child, let's talk about that. When he became president after this coup, he didn't have much to do. Let's be real here. Aristide had just basically destroyed their entire Divalier reign, okay? He was literally, allegedly, okay, according to those who hate Aristide, allegedly out here, you know, killing a lot of the Tonton Makut, um, basically going against military and police and government personnel that were in charge of um, Haiti at the time. So there was a lot going on. Nonetheless, even though he had been rid of a coup, he did have a lot of supporters. And of course, since Preval was his friend, it was very easy for him to get into office. It was not difficult whatsoever. So he didn't really have to do much. If anything, he kind of like continued the line of whatever Aristide was doing. And this made a lot of people very upset because of course, a lot of people did not like Aristide and they felt like he was allowing a lot of the shitty shit that he let happen continue to happen which like I mentioned before is, you know, essentially just letting everyone run amok and seek revenge on everyone that did them wrong during the Duvalier regime. Now, let me just note this right now. Now, what's very interesting about Aristide and Preval's friendship is that they were very, very opposite, but they couldn't be more similar, if that makes sense. Now, when a lot of people saw Preval and Aristide become friends, they didn't understand how. Because if you see when Aristide talks and just his demeanor and his personality, it does not really mesh with, with one would perceive would be Preval's personality. Preval was quiet, calm, chill, relaxed. He was smaller. He was more low-key. He was in the cut. He wasn't in the limelight. Meanwhile, Aristide was so like gung-ho and passionate. Even when he spoke, everyone listened because he just, he just had that charisma about him. So a lot of people were like, how the hell did these two become friends? Like, I don't understand it. But to be honest, I feel like I'm friends with a lot of people who have completely different personalities than me, but our morals, our beliefs, our values, and our end goals in life are genuinely the same. For example, my friend Sundia, she's been on the channel as well as my other channel a few times and a lot of people are like oh my god like you guys are so different especially in real life they're like oh my god you guys are so different but realistically me and her have the same morals same thing as my boyfriend we have the same morals the same beliefs the same belief system we just have completely different personalities so never judge a book by its cover because you never know what someone really truly believes in and what their overall goals are in life just because someone doesn't act like someone doesn't mean they can't be friends with other people I'm friends with a lot of people who don't even have the same morals as me. Like, let's be real. Like, I had a stripper friend. Like, it is what it is. You know, just because some people have different opinions than you doesn't mean you can't be friends and you can't respect them. So a lot of people really found that hard to believe. And a lot of people were very, very skeptical about it. Because Aristide was very... And Prevot was more of... 
Like, it's very interesting because they both had a common goal, but they both had a different way of going about it. The better way to say this is Ayurved was the fire and Preval was the extinguisher. He essentially saved everything and preserved and essentially realliterated everything that Ayurved did, but in a more calmer, easier to swallow type of way. Now, a lot of people were very receptive to this, while a lot of people didn't really like this. Now, this is another reason people didn't really like Prival because Prival was the type of person to essentially be mute. He was very, very quiet. He wasn't really passionate in the way that Iris did or any of the previous other presidents were. A lot of the presidents kind of ruled with an iron fist. Prival just was not that type of guy. He was the type of person to basically rule things with intellect, logic, and behind the scenes by signing off laws and just essentially being more proactive on the back end instead of reactive on the front end. And this ultimately kind of hurt his presidency because people were just sitting there like, um, you ain't doing shit. Um, he did a lot of things that were very, very beneficial to Haiti. And you know what? Let's just get into that now. So as prime minister, I believe right after the whole situation with Duvalier, he actually dissolved parliament. Again, a very controversial decision, but I feel like it had to be done. Now you kind of have to watch a Duvalier video in the IRC video to understand why this was done. But essentially dissolving parliament basically means you have to rule by decree at that point, especially if you're the prime minister. Um, and he had to dissolve parliament when you think about it because the Duvalier regime literally took over Haiti. Everybody that was part of the government, the police, the militia, the Tontomaku, whatever, were basically heading Haiti. They were in charge of Haiti even after Duvalier left. He dissolved parliament to basically be able to make a fair decision. Aristide's entire government essentially had to be able to govern without the influence of clearly the past dictator because they were in rule for fucking like 40 years or whatever the case may be. It was a long time. So you kind of have to start over when you really think about it. Like in that case, especially the way Haiti is run and all of this like supposed fraud and embezzlement. It makes sense. Also during his presidency, unemployment did drop, even though it was still pretty high, it did drop at its lowest since the Duvalier regime was in office. He's also most notably known for actually privatizing governmental companies in Haiti. He supported all the investigations that had to do with anyone that was thought to be embezzling money from the Haiti National Treasury, stealing money from Haiti as a whole, and of course he protected democracy at all costs. And this is probably one of the very few presidents of Haiti that can say confidently that they did that and didn't get rid out of office, killed, or exiled in the process. Matter of fact, he he was not the type of person to persecute people for their beliefs. He let journalists into the palace. He let journalists write whatever they want. He let people protest whether they were against him or for him. He was not the type of person to go around, you know, terrorizing people who are against him and his presidency. He literally let bygones be bygones. And of course, this was a good and a bad thing. Now, on a positive front, of course, this is democracy. In America, of course, they love to mind everybody business. That's for one other video, but they let them mind everybody business. They were very happy with this because this is what America strives for. Basically, instilling democracy in other countries as well as interfering and stealing their resources for their own personal gain. But that's essentially what America wants. And that's part of the reason why they always intervene in country like Haiti's affairs because, you know, they see the dictatorship, they see all this extra shit, and they just feel like that's not how country should be ran. So essentially, America was very, very pleased with this, but a lot of people in Haiti were not because, again, he's letting people do what they want. And letting people do what they want comes at a cost. Like I said, he was coming from Aristide's rule. He was literally overseeing all the shit that Aristide was doing and he didn't put a stop to it. And part of what Aristide was accused of was letting people run amok, letting people kill the Tonto Makut, letting people seek revenge on the Duvalier and the Duvalieris. And a lot of the Duvalieris and other people we're sitting there like, the fuck? You can't just let people run around, kill people doing all, all this goofy shit. That's just not how it works. So people were very, very mad because it's like, this man doesn't do anything. A lot of people were just like, he's silent. 
He doesn't speak. He doesn't do anything. Any type of crisis, any type of anything crazy, he rarely ever made an appearance, rarely ever spoke or rarely ever spoke about anything. And that was clearly a problem, especially in a country like Haiti, where there's so much going on. But to be quite honest with you, I genuinely feel like he just became president at the wrong time. Of course, during his first presidency, he wasn't really able to do much because Aristide already put his shit in the wind. People were still diehard Aristide Lavalas party. And it's like, what the hell are you going to do? And then the second term, this is when a lot of things were really at its height. Now, of course, Haiti has always had a kidnapping issue. Haiti's always had drug problems. Haiti's always had like crazy prices on certain things that a lot of people can't afford. But at this time, this is when a lot of this was very, 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 very prevalent and definitely coming to the forefront in the news on a national scale. It was really, really bad. People couldn't afford food kidnapping was at a very very high rate i remember growing up and hearing these kidnapping songs all the time all the carnival had these kidnapping songs and i remember like oh my god like this is insane like a lot of people weren't going to haiti at the time so of course tourism was down like worst time to be president like just horrible you know the whole time i was researching this i was like oh i would not want to be you this was just like a horrible time for Haiti. Haiti is transitioning. They're going through all of this. But essentially, I feel like he definitely did do what he could. So realistically, he wasn't really that bad. But I feel like where a lot of the animosity comes from was not being that bad, if that makes sense. When it comes to Haitians, Haitians are very, we need to see it even if we don't like it type of people. Haitians like to see very, very, proactive type of approaches that they can physically see with their own eyes, hear with their own ears, feel with their own emotion. They don't care about what you're doing on the back end. They don't care about what you're doing realistically if they do not feel the effects of it, even if it's something they genuinely do not like. Now, this plays a lot into his demeanor as well. Now, like I said, he was chill, he was laid back, and he was quiet. Now, I'm not just talking about his personality. This had a lot to do with his, his appearance, his demeanor, representation of Haiti as a whole and just overall how he was as a person he would literally go to the outskirts on his motorcycle no security no nothing with a carabella on and some sundal chilling with the locals okay talking to the farmers of course you know talking to the kids talking to the poorer people now this goes into what i spoke about before with Aristide being president u.s and honestly let's be real most foreign entities do not like the idea of poor people becoming presidents in poor countries or people who have very very like humble beginnings backgrounds where like they didn't come from money they do not really appreciate those types of people or people who are close to those types of people being president because they feel like it fuels rebellion it fuels really bad things and let's be real i mean haiti has had a history of having presidents that weren't really the best becoming president um, that come from those type of backgrounds that ended up ruling Haiti with an iron fist. But then when you look at people like Duvalier or Henry Kerstov, we go all the way back, they didn't do that good of a job and they come from really good backgrounds, money, education, and all of that. So realistically, I really don't think that's the problem here. But when it comes to foreign entities, that's how a lot of them view it. They're like, you know what, we can't have poor people, blah, blah, blah. But you know, we want democracy. So we're going to let them vote for who they want. But let's like try to put someone in power that we want, that we Think would do a better job and see how that goes and as you guys can see everybody been minding haiti business but it ain't doing us that much good let's be real here so essentially this became very very problematic it would seem like he wasn't taking the presidency seriously he didn't act the part he didn't look the part he didn't dress the part he didn't like he just was not the part he didn't look like it and haitians are very very visual people they're the type of people that want to see that you are what you say you are for example see i got a master's and i got a bachelor's but since i got a nose ring i just started my locks and i got this little ass tattoo on my wrist right here comment down below if you have a semicolon tattoo just got it for my birthday 
Anyhow, a lot of people, a lot of Haitians in particular, especially older Haitians, will look at me and automatically think I'm a vacabon, I'm a boozin, I'm a this, I'm a that, because I got locks, a nose ring, and a tattoo. Oh, and I wear anklets. I can't lift my leg right now because these jeans are tight, but I got anklets. And you know in the Haitian community, having an anklet means you're lesbian. So essentially, it's like Haitians are very, very visual people. And if you do not look like what you say you are, if you do not hold yourself the way they think you should as your title, as what you have, as where you come from, as your education, you're not that. And if you are that, well, you're not a good whatever it is that you say you are because you don't look like it. You can't be a president because where's your suit? You can't be a president because why you talk like that? Why you never around? Why don't you have more bass in your voice? That's essentially how a lot of Haitians think. And I feel like it's very, very problematic. This played a huge part in his presidency. Another really big issue a lot of people had with Prival is that he was not part of the Lavalas party. Even though he served during Aristide's presidency, as prime minister and he was very good friends with Aristide, he did not serve. He was not part of the Lava Last Party. In fact, he actually started his own party with his friends called the Lispoa Party. Lispoa actually means hope. Meanwhile, Lava Last means waterfalls. Now, essentially, they both have the same common good of, you know, advance Haiti and, you know, make Haiti great again. Trump voice. <laughs> Let's talk about how, like, Trump lost that election and now the internet is so much more peaceful. Like all his supporters are like quiet, they're gone. Like, thank God. Which I mean, honestly, if you support him, like I'm not gonna judge you, that's not the point. I'm saying like, it's really funny how like a lot of the problematic people that were supporting him have like, hushed. But anyhow, it's very interesting because a lot of people looked at it as, okay, so you out here, this is your friend. Your friend has the Lava Last Party. It's a great party. We love this party. And at this time, you know, like I said, it was very, very, like, this is around the first time primarily. This is around the first presidency. A lot of people were looking at it like, okay, so this is your friend. He's part of the Lava Last Party. He's the head of the Lava Last Party. He created the Lava Last Party. And you're not part of the Lava Last Party? What the fuck is this? Ki kakasa? Ki gui ma What kind of, like, you know? So now it's it's kind of like, so should we be weary of the Lava Last Party? Is there something we should know about you? How can we trust you if you're not part of his party? And let me just say that Haiti has so many goddamn parties that they can have a rave at this damn point. There's so many political parties and just like ideas in Haiti that are just ridiculous. And that's part of another reason why they're probably never going to get anywhere. Like, I'm sorry to sound like a, a pessimist, but I'm just being real here. Too many parties, too many ideas, and too many ways to rebuild the country that hasn't really rebuilt the country. Now, um, I spoke about the Lava Lost Party in the previous video. You guys can go check that out. Um, the Lispa Party was something that him and his friends created, but I believe he ended up being like the face of it. But a lot of people found that very, very iffy. Okay, guys, so I completely forgot to mention this, but I have to mention it now. This is going to probably take a long time to explain, so I'm going to try to dumb it down. But essentially, I need you guys to do your own research on this to understand it better. So the Lispa and the Lava Lost Party essentially have the same common goals of philanthropy and making Haiti great again. All right, boom, cool. Genuinely, I don't understand why they didn't just become one big party, but essentially Lispa was a subset slash extension of the Lava Las party. Virtually the same goal, but not essentially the same ways of going about their goals. But they always mutually supported each other no matter what. Now, as you guys see, I'm speaking at past tense. That's because of Apparently, the Lisboa party no longer exists. Um, upon further research, it has been replaced by the Unite, aka Unity Party. Like I said, Haiti has too many parties. I just, I really can't. They've been going strong for about 12 years now, so let's hope this one stays in existence. But it's just really, really interesting. And this is definitely something you guys have to keep in mind when watching the rest of this video. Now, one theory that I'm just going to put out there, it's a theory. Okay, I'm saying this again, this is a theory, this is not fact, is that he was put there as a puppet, as in Aristide was forced into exile. He was put there to keep the seat warm. That's what a lot of people think and a lot of people feel like he was Again, as always, no president is a president of Haiti without the whole accusation of embezzling money. They felt like he was taking money and sending it. Now, when I first heard about this whole embezzling thing, I was like, okay, I don't see it. Like the man is wearing fucking chincletas in a fucking t-shirt. Like there's no way they could say he's embezzling money because where the fuck is it going? And then I realized, okay, the whole theory is he was keeping the seat warm and sending money back to Aristide while he was in exile 
in South Africa or wherever the hell he was or is at this current moment. This has always been the general consensus that was going on in a lot of people's minds because they were like, he's not really doing anything like we don't see him doing anything so what the hell is he there for now first presidency was relatively calm because like i said he ain't had much to really do so he did his part and he retreated right back to quiet life his private life the farm life he really did not like all this limelight he didn't like all this attention he didn't like all these people in his business and rightfully so being a public figure is annoying as fuck because everybody's in your motherfucking business can you imagine being president you know he was chilling she thought about Piemont Go having his grand old time when people eventually came to bother him and bring him right back into the spotlight, okay? So after Aristide was president and finished his second term, supporters of both Aristide and Preval came to Preval basically begging him to run for president again. And he was very, very like, mm, about it. He was very like skeptical, very like apprehensive because he was like, I don't really want to be part of this anymore. Like, I'm chilling. Like, this is not really what I want to do. But he did it as an obligation to his people. And he really felt like he wanted to make a difference. And he felt like he could make a difference. But this is the worst time to be president, as I mentioned before. This is the height of the kidnapping situation. Food prices are going up. All types of crazy things are happening. But he felt an obligation to his country. And he decided to run again. He won and was sworn in in 06. And um, let me just rewind right now because Wu Chow, we got to run that back because this is another reason a lot of people genuinely do not like this man. And I need you guys to draw your own conclusions. No president in Haiti is a president without accusations of voter fraud. So these second round of elections really fucked Preval up. Now they fucked Preval up because Lavalas really went to bat for him in a sense that kind of ruined his reputation and tainted the way people thought about him. So essentially, he lost this election on the forefront and it looked like he lost fair and square until a lot of people in the Lava Lost party went and saw like a bunch of like destroyed and burnt ballots that had Preval's name on it. So they took to the streets, they started rioting and of course political unrest ensued. It was really hectic. Hillary Clinton actually got involved to the point where she got 14 Lava Lost candidates like completely removed from being able to run for the house and like it's just insane. Again, another example of how America does not like to mind their business. <laughs> it was insane, y'all. Like, what I'm telling you, insane. And after that, of course, lots of shit ended up happening. People were definitely looking at him sideways. And this is when he demanded. Okay, demanded. Now, this is interesting because at this point, this man's so quiet. He's so chill. He's so relaxed. At this point, he got voice. He, he got bass. In his voice he was like mm -mm, i demand okay he demanded that he be named president and that all of this was a fluke and that everything was just bullshit okay he basically was like no like no i'm president and that's that and this caused lots of protests lots of riots people were fucking upset because they felt like that was a little iffy it was a little off and of course if you're so pro-democracy what the fuck is this what kind of democracy is that you lost you lost motherfucker so of course Haitians were very, 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 like, if anything, I can say this is probably, like, one of the main things that really set in stone why a lot of people genuinely don't like him, because realistically, that is a dictator move. Like, he literally pulled the Trump before Trump even did it, but Trump didn't even succeed at that. But you get the point. Like, you can't essentially do that. But of course, you know, his supporters will definitely be like, you know, it was fair and square. There was something going on with the count, and it is what it is. He was president. He was a good president, served two times, and it is what it is. And to be honest, they can't blame him for that. They can blame the Provisional Electoral Committee because they're the ones that essentially named him president. He actually did have a wife. And what I found interesting is he had a wife the first presidency and then got remarried his second presidency. And the shit that I found on this was just fucking ridiculously hilarious. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, y'all ain't shit. He actually had three wives. I'm gonna have to read to, to get these names right because I don't want to fuck nobody's shit up, okay? So we had Solange Lafontaine, divorced in 1997. Jérôme Benoit, divorced in 2009. And then we have his current wife, um, Elizabeth de la so I was like, 
very, very interesting. Um, three wives, God damn it. Looks like his quiet demeanor really did not work out that well at all. Three marriages, I was like, that's very interesting. Now, what people had to say about his marriage was just ridiculous. Like, I was like, y'all ain't shit. <laughs> his last marriage, y'all ain't shit. People were like, oh my God, the Divalier wedding was better, ta ta ta. Okay, <laughs> the wedding that essentially was funded by y'all money that was supposed to be used to feed y'all asses. Y'all the ones saying that that wedding was better? Okay, it kept y'all hungry though, the fuck? Honestly, why are Haitians like this? <laughs> like, what I found really funny is how like a lot of people had like crushes on him and people thought he was like so attractive or whatever. I feel like it was just the demeanor he had. You know, he was so quiet. You know, girls love a nice guy, especially Haitian women. They love a guy that doesn't scream at them and you know that they can walk all over. That sounds fucked up, but it's true because a lot of Haitian men are abusive and it's great to see a guy that is the complete opposite sometimes. So a lot of people were just like, oh my God, he's so cute. He's so this, Ugh, that's so weird. Like, <laughs> so when he got married, yeah, for the third time, yeah. A lot of people were like, oh, my man got taken from me. Kind of like when Baby Doc finally got um, married or whatever. But then again, he wasn't really attractive. He didn't even have a neck at the time, so I don't know why they could come to that like that. You know what, let me stop. We're not here for that, but very interesting to know. Now, aside from not joining the Lava Last Party, basically being way too quiet about issues she should have spoke up about, basically being accused of voter fraud, being accused of keeping the seat warm. As a proud advocate of supporting all the investigations of where Haiti's money from the National Treasury went, he allowed, allowed Duvalier, okay, baby doc, to come back to Haiti to, I guess, answer for his crimes, which clearly he didn't and he's now deceased. As you can imagine, when you are exiled from a country, the people essentially don't want to see you again. You're like running away from what they're accusing you of. So like you coming back is like essentially a death wish and honestly seen as extremely disrespectful to those who clearly didn't want that person there. And um, of course you gotta be fair, Fair is fair, even if that person's your friend. He let Iris Deed back into the country as well. So he essentially let two presidents that have a huge accusation of stealing money from the treasury, among other crimes against Haiti's government and people, basically come out of exile to answer for their crimes. Ooh, people were very outraged. And I believe this was after the earthquake. I'm not, I'm, I'm very sure it was probably after or before, or very close to the time of the earthquake. Nonetheless, people were pissed. We had his quiet personality biting him in the butt during Haiti's earthquake. Now, if you guys are not aware, Haiti had a very horrible earthquake that happened in 2010. Now, Haiti has natural disasters all the time, mainly because they're at the like epicenter of like horrible weather. Like Haiti is geographically proportioned at the worst spot like it really is that's from another video but essentially you know they have tsunamis hurricanes all types of shit all the time monsoons i think like they, they have all types of crazy things but earthquakes haiti's not used to that so of course the damage was catastrophic people all over the world were praying for haiti sending money to haiti and all of this extra shit okay we all know we are the world and all of this extra stuff was going on all fake by the way and to be quite honest with you haiti never saw any of this money and Haiti's still suffering from this. This was 2010, we're in 2021 right now, as of right now that we're making this video. Haiti is still recovering. There's still rubble. There's still dead bodies under the rubble. There are still things that need to be rebuilt. There's still things that need to be restored. There's still a very, very horrible infrastructure, mainly due to this earthquake. This earthquake really fucked Haiti up more than anyone can ever imagine and beyond belief. And he handled this so poorly to the point where that a lot of people back when the earthquake happened to now and even before the earthquake happened attribute all of this and put all of this on his back when the earthquake happened preval did what he does best he disappeared this is haiti's disappearing president anytime something serious happened he just disappeared he didn't speak about anything really and when he did it was like a one or two sentence type of situation he was just gone and what's really fucked up about this is of course 
What can you really say? But you're the motherfucking president. Like these people are traumatized. Okay. They got their family freaking trapped under rubble. They're poor. They need help. They need food. They need water. They need medical attention. And you're not saying anything now to his defense. And a lot of his supporters will definitely say that, you know, he was doing a lot of things on the back end, which he was, you know, he was talking to foreign entities, trying to get aid into the country and all of that. And of course that brings us into the whole Clinton situation. A lot of people blame him for letting the Clintons into the country to steal money, which I don't fuck with the Clintons to this day. When Hillary was running, I want that hoe to win because she need to run Haiti Day money back. Okay, there's lots of evidence that suggests that the Clinton Foundation stole lots of money from Haiti, thousands, millions, lots of money from Haiti. And it's really insane because this shit actually really pisses me off because come on now. Like, this is not the time to be fucking stealing money, especially from a country that really needs it during their time of need in a fucking national crisis, a natural disaster. That's, like, really fucked up. So what really transpired there, like, genuinely solidified him is one of the most irresponsible, negligent, and, I guess, unfit presidents ever. Because it's like, your people needed you and you essentially disappeared on them. I actually read something somewhere and I might link it down below where, you know, his wife was talking to him. He was like, you know, you can't just disappear on them. You have to say anything. You have to say something, you know, give them some encouragement, some hope, some something. And he was like, what am I going to say to them? What am I going to say to these people who already had nothing that just lost everything? You know, which absolutely true. But again, that's just not how you handle things. And this fucked him up. He really just didn't really comment on a lot of things that were happening. But you have to take into account that that's just his personality. He's very, very quiet. He's very reserved. He doesn't rule with an iron fist. He's not confrontational. That's just how he is. And he's always been that way. And you can't really change someone. I feel like people expected him to rise to the occasion because he had such a good heart since he had such a good idea for Haiti, you know, he had the whole list while party. I feel like essentially it was one of those things where it's like, we want him to win. I want him to do good. We want him to like essentially be the champion of the poor that we've all named him, that we want him to be. But essentially he fell flat on his face because that's just not his personality. Not everyone could be president of Haiti. Okay. Not everyone can have that good medium of being assertive but being personable at the same time he was just way too personable to the point where his emotions always got the best of him to the point where he could not comment on national affairs that were really really affecting haiti and its people he was so emotional that he would just draw back disappear become a sitting duck and clearly that did not help haiti at Oh. Okay, so talking about Haiti's earthquake actually always makes me extremely emotional. I actually did my final college capstone on Haiti's earthquake. I interviewed a victim and everything. I'm going to link that down below. However, what I found interesting is I looked into this again as I was editing and shout out to a journalist named Jacqueline Schall from the Miami Herald who actually did an interview with Priva like hours after the earthquake hit. Now she essentially released all of this like in 2017 and I'm not quite sure why but you guys can go read the full article it's going to be linked down below and it's super duper important to draw your own conclusions about this now like i said he was always very quiet he was a very i'll do the end on the back end less work more action type of president and that's what a lot of people took him as and basically took everything he was doing on the back end as gratitude you know they were like you know at least he's doing something while a lot of people since they couldn't see it they see him as doing nothing. Now, this just really breaks my heart because um, I'm going to read parts of this article, two parts in particular that I feel like if you guys don't click on the article, you need to understand. So this is directly from the article. It says he would walk out of the door, visit the mostly Haitian journalists sitting in the yard of the police headquarters and watch foreign diplomats and aid experts trying to outdo one another with their aid offerings. 
when a representative of the U.S. State Department pushed to let homeless quake victims start building shacks to get economy going. Preval didn't reply. He simply shook his head in objection. And like the savvy political chess player he was, he acted as if he hadn't heard and stubbornly requested tents. Many criticized his move. Rene Preval knew his people knew his country. He knew that any sort of wood and concrete structure, anything besides a tent, would turn into a permanent senti town, something Haiti didn't need. Foreign diplomats and others called him stubborn and bullheaded. He didn't care. What he cared about and stressed to me over the years was stability. Without stability, he would say, Haiti could never attract jobs. Haiti could not move forward. And stability meant real reconstruction, not post earthquake shacks now what's very crazy about this is like i said it was super hard to find any information about Preval doing any wrong however when it comes to the earthquake that was probably the only thing i was able to genuinely find and it's crazy because with most haiti's presidents they do anything in a power to like really drag them especially american journalists but in this case it's very funny how they essentially spun this to make it seem like you know he didn't care and he didn't do anything i'm very very happy that jacqueline like put this out there it's very easy to take this for face value and see what articles are being written and also just being in haiti not seeing him essentially and not hearing any public statements be made and draw the conclusion of where he at he disappeared but then when you read this it's like wow like he really was trying you know to do something he was trying to do the best that he could but sadly his best just really wasn't good enough so this next part is even more like Wow. So it says in the weeks and years after the earthquake, Preval would be criticized for not speaking to the media immediately following the tragedy. He did. He spoke to me and the handful of Haitian journalists who were also on the tarmac that day. Though no one could broadcast because transmission lines were down, he was berated for not offering his condolences to the Haitian people after being quoted about his palace collapsing. He did offer his condolences that day and said that it wasn't just one neighborhood that was destroyed, but all of Prince. When Preval unexpectedly died Friday at the age of 74, the two-term president left a legacy of better roads and a greater political stability. He was not a showman and his quiet demeanor irked diplomats and at times Haitians. But for me, no memory is stronger than his quiet focus in the hours after the worst disaster to strike Haiti in modern times. Oh, child, this really just sums it up. Um... Like I said, you guys have to draw your conclusions from there. Um, with all due respect, yeah, definitely his palace was like kind of destroyed. Transmission lines were definitely down. And even on regular times, it's very hard to get through to Haiti sometimes. Like I remember when my dad was Haiti, I would call him and like the fucking call would drop in 2.5, like from nothing at all. So to be honest, it's just really, really, it's really, really sad. It really, really is. Um, I don't think people should have dragged him the way they did because they really did. I genuinely, vividly remember this. But, I mean, yeah, I still don't agree with not giving a public response because clearly you were there. Clearly there were journalists there. And clearly, I mean, like I said, shout outs to her for posting this, but, like, freaking two, like, it's it's 2017. Like, come on now. Um yeah, I think this should have been released sooner or someone else should have kind of released something similar sooner. Maybe someone else did. I think I maybe just came across this one. But yeah, like I said, draw your conclusions down below because I found this extremely interesting. Now, sadly, he did die March 3rd, 2017 at the age of 74. It's very, very sad. A lot of people were very, very heartbroken by this. But of course, this is like kind of still the aftermath of the earthquake. So of course, a lot of people had a lot of disgusting things to say about it. I mean, nonetheless, he protected democracy at any cost. This had to be probably the only time where journalists were not killed as much or as badly as they used to be in the past. People were able to protest freely and express themselves freely, whether they were for him or against him. A lot of things went up. Like I said, a lot, of, a lot more people had jobs and things like that. The infrastructure was a lot better on the back and when he was president and we can't genuinely say he did absolutely nothing but from what i understand from a lot of people's frustrations they didn't really benefit from most of the things that 
Preval did as president. So on one hand, you can see him as a proactive leader on the back end that wanted to fix the infrastructure of Haiti before he got to the forefront and was only able to do what Haiti allowed him to do. Because like I said, everyone was very hardcore Aristi Lavalas party or still Duvalieris. So he did where he could there. On the other hand, you can see him as a sitting duck president that was incompetent and basically did absolutely nothing and kept the seat warm and embezzled money and sent it to Iris Seed and whoever else and essentially was just reaping the benefits of being president while still living his normal life and not really doing his job as he was supposed to. Nonetheless, I'd love to hear your opinions down below because there's a lot to unpack. I left all my sources down below as well as you guys have to do your own research, draw your own conclusions. This one was very, very hard because there wasn't that much like bad about him. It really, really wasn't. So you might have to ask around. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that. Let me know what you think about this video. Get your merchandise. And also comment down below who was your favorite president and why. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, do all that. And I'm gonna see y'all next time.